from the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. Two Bahamian pilots who died in a fiery plane crash in Abaco on Monday were not qualified to fly the jet, perplexing investigators who have since opened a stolen aircraft inquiry into the matter. Investigators are trying to piece together the suspicious circumstances that prompted the former Royal Bahamas Defense Force Marines to fly that plane. Captain Delvin Major, chief investigator of the Air Accident Investigation Authority, said yesterday that Jason Allen was a student pilot and that while LeVan Paul had an airline transport license, he did not have a type rating to fly that aircraft. Pilots of such planes require a type rating certification, which involves additional training beyond their initial instruction. In a statement yesterday, police also said officers of the Marsh Harbor Police Station on Tuesday received a report that the plane was stolen from the Treasure Key Airport. The Bahamas has closed its embassy in Haiti and will beef up border security at home as a precautionary measure after Haitian President Jovenel Moise was assassinated at his home yesterday. Foreign Affairs Minister Darren Henfield said the embassy will remain shut until a way forward is determined. Haiti's First Lady Martine Moise was hospitalized after she was shot in the overnight attack. The Haitian president had ruled by decree for more than two years after the country failed to hold elections and the opposition demanded he step down in recent months contributing to a precarious political situation in that country. Government has also reported that the Bahamas' four diplomats in Haiti are currently safe. A man was fatally electrocuted yesterday morning while he was working on air conditioning repairs on a small yacht docked at the Joseph Alfred Dock in the Bay Street area. Relatives and friends have identified the victim as Shervin Brennan. He's believed to be in his late 20s. Police said they were alerted to the incident after 10 a.m. They said, quote, sometime after 10, police were called to the Joseph Alfred Dock situated on Bay Street. On their arrival, they were directed to a small yacht where they went to the engine room of that yacht and found the unresponsive body of a male lying Lying over the engine bay. The information is that while he was doing some repairs, he complained of being electrocuted and moments later, his colleagues went into the engine room and examined him and he was unresponsive. Emergency medical services visited the scene and pronounced that victim lifeless. Two police officers involved in a much-publicized arrest have been commended and rewarded by Commissioner Paul Roll. The commendation followed an incident on Tawny Williams Darling Highway where Constable 4233 Tyree Smith tried to stop a young man who became belligerent and assaulted him. Videos of that incident went viral on social media, showing the young man being disrespectful and violent towards that officer who was trying to calm him down. The altercation went on for some time until video footage showed another officer now confirmed as Sergeant Sergeant Travis Strawn ran to the aid of Constable Smith. Sergeant Strawn ran from some distance to the scene, drew his weapon, and assisted Constable Smith in subduing the suspect, bringing calm to the situation and then arresting the man. Many videos circulated on social media showing various angles of the scene, with commentary from those recording the incident. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, rescue workers now focused on finding remains instead of survivors in the rubble of a Florida condominium collapse paused briefly atop the pile today to mark the two-week anniversary of the disaster, but said they had no plans to pull back during the recovery effort. The death toll rose to 60 with another 80 people unaccounted for. Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava said at a news conference, detectives are still working working to verify that each of those listed as missing was actually in the building when it collapsed. An already struggling and chaotic Haiti stumbled into an uncertain future today after the assassination of President Jovenel Moise, followed by a gunfight in which police killed seven suspects, detained six others, including a U.S. citizen, and freed three officers being held hostage. A hunt was underway for any other gunmen responsible for the pre-dawn raid on Moise's home early Wednesday, in which the president was shot to death and his wife Martine critically wounded. She was flown to Miami for treatment. Matthias Pierre, Haiti's elections minister, told the Associated Press that one of the suspects in custody was James Solagis, a Haitian American. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A strong high pressure dominates the weather across the Bahamas with moderate to strong winds and pleasant conditions as Tropical Storm Elsa's rain bands generate some unsettled weather over the extreme northwestern islands. Mariners in the northwest Bahamas should remain alert for possible water spout activity. Beach goers in the central and southeast Bahamas should exercise caution along easterly beaches due to the risk of rip currents. Residents and visitors are urged to 
remain hydrated and limit outdoor activity as indices climb into the triple digits. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly sunny and hot, with cloudy periods of widely scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms, mainly in the area of rain bands, becoming fair and warm tonight with a passing shower or a thunderstorm. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeasterly at 10 to 15 knots, gusty at times. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be partly to mostly sunny, hot, and breezy, with passing showers becoming fair and breezy with a chance of a shower tonight. Small craft advisory continues. Winds easterly at 20 to 25 knots. Seas 5 to 8 feet. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 91 degrees, a heat index of 103, and an overnight low temperature of 75. The sun will set this afternoon at 801 and will rise tomorrow morning at 627. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets. Or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.